Welcome back to another Talk BS with the BS Experience. Guest star today, Mike Devos and Neto Mom Jame. I'm going to add her to the call right now. Here we go. Let's go. Look who joined us. Mike and Mike, 86. Mike and Mike. What up, guys? <laughs> look at your muscles. Look flex. Yeah, look at you. Wow. Oh, that quarantine's wow. hitting you differently. <laughs> I've been riding my scooter. I've been riding my scooter around the block. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Tail whips, three sixty. Yes. I have to hold on because it's going so fast and going up the mountains and stuff. <laughs> now the California All Stars did it originate like as a small gym? Like was it a different gym or was it kind of just brought up like, oh, did you guys make up the name? Like did Tanaz and them? So it was my freshman year of high school. It was North County Bullets. Oh, that's right. I've heard about. Yeah. Yep. So it was uh, all girl. They had an all girl team. They didn't have a co-ed. Uh, that was Tanaz's first year coming back from college. And Tanaz was helping like my team, you know, be great. And it was in Carlsbad is easy. Um, and so she started helping our team. We actually started like being super successful, you know, all of the big name, the big name gyms back in the day, like we were beating them. Uh, the next season, my sophomore year, she started uh, which is now Cali co-ed. She started a co-ed team. And we started out of the YMCA. We would do practices on the beach, like, you know, and it was it was so fun and new and exciting. Third year, she got, Chanaz got a gym in San Marcos, California All-Star Bullets. And then um, 2003 was the first year that we attended NCA. It was Cali co-ed. Uh -huh. California All-Stars attended NCA at all. Do you know when you go away from something, either either you don't get it, that you miss it so much that you want to go back, or that you get away from it and you feel like you need to move on to other things? Do you think that I would has made people miss it more? Mm, I would hope and pray that that's it. But at the end of the day, um, it's so much more than missing it, right? Like we want, we're doing everything we can to make sure this next season's affordable and. Um, financially you know like we don't want this to be a hardship we don't want them to have to make like I, it's just hard so it, it, there's so much more into it than just missing it right because there's people that are losing their jobs that have you know the hours have been cut back and it's not just like a few weeks like this has been since March right we're going on month yeah. two almost yeah yeah and you know so you know, we're doing a lot of things in house to cut back costs for our families in hopes that that would help so that they don't have to give up their passion and they, um, you know, can still be a part of the Cali family. Like we're going to go, we're going to do whatever we can. So uh, we hope everyone comes back. Do you think we're going to lose a lot of small gyms or not even that maybe even lose some bigger gyms? I hope not. I pray not. I hope that everyone can sustain this, you know, our community is so vast and it takes all of us to make this community, right? Like I would, I don't want to see any yeah. gyms go under. I don't want to see any event producers. I don't want to see anyone in our industry struggling. You know, we are such a new sport, um, you know, new and emerging and coming out. Like I want everyone to thrive. So, you know me, I'm just trying to stay optimistic and positive and, um, be there if people need need anything and then like yeah. do my part to do what I feel is right for everyone. But there's a lot of eager people wanting to come back and ready to come back. So well yeah I see it on Twitter how they wanted worlds to still happen this month and <laughs> I was like whoa. Yeah. Like the day of when worlds actually should have been and said guys it, it's cancelled. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. we should be at Worlds right now. Guess what guys? It's really cancelled now. I didn't think I was going to be emotional on that morning. And I don't know why. I guess I just didn't think about it. Um, I guess that there was just not a moment for, for us or for me to like process my emotions through this, right? Like it happened. It was like, okay, you know, crisis mode. Let's fix this. Let's figure it out. Like everything's changing every day. Like it was, it was a lot to take in and we wanted to be there for our kids. But then on world's morning, like on finals day, like I was very sad. Yeah. I harassed Mike like a guys. She called me and was like, <laughs> she calls me and like five times. So I finally answered because I was still sleeping. She goes, I need you to cry with me. I'm like, what? She goes, I'm watching videos. Please cry with me. I was like, I'm going back to sleep. I'll talk to you. I, was, like, yeah. I, was, I was sitting there and I was like handicapped. And I think Joel was trying to get me to go somewhere. I'm like, I just couldn't. Like, I just stayed there and I was just watching all the videos. Mike, where'd you come from? Did you, you were in a small, smaller northern California gym, weren't you? Uh, we, uh, it was South Bay elite and then it was NorCal elite 
And then yeah. right around 2009, 10, I went down to, I was with my brothers because my brothers, Cameron, uh, Xavier, Brett, and all them, they started going to uh, Cali from Northern California uh, back in 2005. And so we were doing that commute um, from Northern California to SoCal every week. And then um, oh, oh, I ended up joining over there uh, right around 2009, 2010. And I was on the international team for a few years. That's how my, my journey started with Cali. Where, where did you two meet? Uh, we oh, met. We met when I, I mean, I feel like we've crossed paths. I mean, we have crossed paths before, obviously. Like I, we've talked on the phone and everything, but we didn't like meet me and become close until I started coming up to the Livermore location. Yeah. Right. Yep. 2011, 2012. Yeah. Like we had seen each other. Like I think when he was on international, like I'd come to the gym with James when James Steed was there. Is that when yeah. I, yeah. 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 And I would, I would come to the gym and like do stuff and for the season before I came up, it was just like phone stuff. And then we like met, really met and became close and besties for the resties. <laughs> <laughs> when, no, I'm so corny. I love it. Um, <laughs> when I moved up here or when I started coming up here, cause I didn't move up here first. It was two weeks on, two weeks off. How did that all come across? So Jeff and Tanaz started California all stars in 2000, right? And yeah. you, uh, brought in California All Stars Livermore in 2011, like uh, nine, 10, 2009, 2010. No, 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 2010, 11, and then <laughs> the first year, then 11, 12 was the second year because last year was our 10th year in Bay Area. So 2010, so you got six locations in three states. How did how did you become Bay Area? Did you just put names in a hat and you, Rana and Tanaz, just picked it out and went, oh, Netta, Bay Area? No. <laughs> I'm the little no. sister. <laughs> <laughs> they just shoved you I, up. I yet. do as I'm, I, I've learned, I do as I'm told. And they have my best interest at heart, but two weeks on, two weeks off. And uh, I started coming up two weeks on, two weeks off. But as you know, you can't do anything and be really successful and great. And like, I'm the person, you know, I, and I love cheerleading too. Um, I just, I am passionate about it. And that, that wishy-washy in and out, wasn't working. So finally I was like, okay, I found a place. I shipped my car up and here I am almost 10 years later. <laughs> 10 years later. You guys together have won worlds 2013, 2017, 18, 19, and could have possibly been 20. What kind of makes you guys so successful together? I think it's a co collective. I, I mean, it is. It, it's it, very collective. It's, yeah. we, we, we push each other as much as we push the kids. Um, I, 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 when I feel like I need to pull back because I don't want to, Netta's like, no, they can go more. And we're always finding that fine line of pushing our kids and teaching them life lessons. And I think it's, we, it's more of teaching them life lessons than it is cheerleading. You yeah. Know, how we get the best. They have the skills, right? Like at a certain point in life, no matter what it is, like we're in a position because we have the skills and we got there. Mm -hmm. But what's the thing, the one thing that always holds us back? Mental. Our thoughts, our mind, how we think about things, how we perceive ourselves. You know, a kid might have a double but doesn't throw it, right? We have to build up their confidence that they can. But um, I also think collectively, like, Mike and I work really well together. Like, we get in fights and stuff. It's funny. Um, we'll laugh about it, like, five minutes later. But collectively, like, our entire program, like, um, all of our coaches, like I were on the phone all night talking to people for having issues and our, uh, within our Bay Area location, you know, our kids wouldn't be so strong and where they are, you know, physically, if they weren't growing up through our program, because we have some bad ass, you know, yeah. lower level coaches, like they're, they're the best of the best. So um, it's collective, it's everyone that it's encompassing the whole program, you know, Jeff comes up all the time and he's such a motivator and inspirer. Um, you know, our hearts, I feel like are always in the right place. And we just have a really cool group of people that care around us. You know, it's not about the wins. And I think once Mike and I stopped caring about the wins, like the wins started happening, which is yeah. The way you and Mike are in the gym, there's times where us as athletes would like, damn, I hate Netta so much today. And whatever but then you always know that if you need something i could just get on the phone and be like netta i'm struggling at school or do you think that's why you're getting the best of these kids because they know that um they, they want to do it for you at the end of the day i think it's a mutual trust i think that we're not here for the wins we're not here like the wins are going to happen or, or they're not hello like 
NCA the last two years. <laughs> like it, it's fine. It happens it's cheerleading, but three. either we win. Yeah, I was about to say it was about to return again. Three. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But like we either win or we learn. Like we're always growing, and it, a loss isn't a loss unless you make it a loss. So, but I, I do think that the kids trust us. They know, yeah, there might be times that they're like, oh, like I hate her today or I hate him today and whatever. But at the end of the day, like we're there to give you a hug. We're there to love you. We, and we genuinely love our kids. Like I, we still to keep in touch with all of our kids, like going back to our 2013, um, our first, you know, class, if you would like to call it that. But yeah. I, I just think they trust us. And, and, and we trust them and we put that, like there's that little tug of war in the beginning, like we have to build it, but they, um, I think they trust us and they respect us and they love, I hope they love us just as much as we love them. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and getting to see both of you two, uh, actually see skills both of you guys have thrown. Um, if you guys could be right now, if you guys could be on a co-ed team or actually any team, which one would it be? Not, not can't be Cali or, um, gym time if you were to pick one that you can compete on which one would it be for me i think i'd be wildcats <laughs> they just they're just there's a vibe about them there's an energy i just i i feel like we can relate to the to that level that caliber um i think for me it'd be wildcats they're just so much fun mm, i i would just want to be on a level seven team i'd want to be <laughs> and he wants her arabian double and yeah level seven which, which was your favorite year as a coach and a team? I know they're, they're Every, all your favorites, but which, which is like stand out to you? I feel like 2013, 2012-13 was so fun because we were so fresh. We were so green. We were like, let's go, like figuring it out. And like we won worlds. Like that was amazing. Mm. Um, the first year. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and we were like figuring out kind of who we were, but we didn't really know yet, right? 2014, I think, was a really difficult year um, because we weren't experienced enough as coaches to handle, you know, what it looks like as at, like for the athletes, like coming on your first year winning and next year, you know, there's a fine line between confidence and cocky. That's why we yeah. all type that with you guys. Um, 2015, I really feel like we're, we found our groove. Like that's when Mike and I like started finding found, our style. Like, like we found our groove of who we were as coaches, and that built, started a foundation of like how we coach, and we started evolving from there. So, like 2015 was awesome. Uh, I think 2017 was another. It's like every two years, I guess. 2017 was like our Black Ops babies. Like they had been with us for years like one tumbling touch away or one drop set, you know, uh, away from winning. And that take there's, you can't teach the taste of defeat. And that lights a set is sort of fire underneath you where that 2017 team, like with conviction, every time was like, we are doing this. Like, at a, you know, and we didn't hit anything at the gym, yeah. but they would look at all the new, like new athletes and the rookies on the team. And they were like, we're doing this. You got this. You can do this. Let's go. And there was something about that that was like, yeah, I got this. We are doing this. Let's go. And you can't teach that. You know, that's not, te it's something that is built over uh, experiences and time. And although we're so like, blessed that we've been successful the last few years i feel like uh, like i don't know mike do you agree with like what's your take on our like your favorite season what's yours um uh, again like you say every year it brings something new to us and we learn something different i, I can say the memorable one uh, was due to our loss at nca the last uh what was it 2018 2019 it was we we're finding the groove of the team and they went out on the NCA floor um, not being themselves. And it took that loss to figure out who they're supposed to be. And that shift right there going into Worlds was something that was memorable and was due to losing. It was, wasn't yeah. because we are successful. But the kids learned that they don't they, – they have to be themselves. Yeah. Be yourself. Enjoy the process. Love the experience. And go out there and have fun. And that's what they did uh, after NCA going into Worlds. And those were two amazing performances, or four yeah. amazing performances. Um, I would say those are some memorable years. But we wouldn't be who we are without the 2013, 14, 15 years of For catching sure. that groove and stuff like that. So there was a, there was a lot of experience that kind of just sling, um, slingshotted us to where we are today. Yeah. 
does it make it hard for the future ops though people that are coming in does it make it a lot harder for them to to come in i, I like, think i think they, they know what they're signing up for but at this point now like they know it's these these this team is it, it, they're a competitive team and i they they know what they're signing up for but it's a lot of the generation of kids that are coming up to ops right now are the kids are that have been in the gym so yikes yikes <laughs> i want to I piggyback off what mike said about like the 2018 team when they don't and they weren't authentically themselves i take full responsibility for ops <laughs> 2018 day one NCAA. Yeah, five stunt I, I, be, I beat myself up over that like all the time like i do i feel like i don't know like we wanted to push like we wanted to i i don't i don't know what it was but like we knew like day two we watered it down like we knew we should have and it had we just watered it down day one you know they would have they would have won nca and worlds so I take that, I think that that was our, 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 on our shoulders. But I do think that 2019, that was when we learned, that we taught our kids to be authentically themselves. People 2018, that, they went out there and they were themselves. It's just, we, we made it too hard for them. <laughs> we weren't ourselves. We pushed them too hard. And it, it was too hard. It was unnecessarily too hard. Like the watered down version was kick ass. Like we were still doing co-ed handstands. Like no one was doing those. Yeah. Like, so, but people that haven't grown up Cali and coming in, do they feel like now that they're on Black Ops or people that come into Black Ops in the future, do they think they're automatically going to get a world championship? Is that is that the mindset? I don't know. I hope not because that's not the mindset that gets you a, a, a championship, you know? It's a lot harder than they thought it was going to be. I'd hope that their mindset for any, like, athletes that want to come join would be, like, let's get ready to push boundaries within ourselves. Let's, let's get ready to um, create a foundation of who we want to be five and 10 years from now. Let's create a work ethic that is so untouchable that no matter what you do in life, you will be unstoppable. Like let's make amazing memories together. Like let's not focus on the win. Let's build everything inside of us that needs to, you need to make you a champion and let's take that in and enjoy it. But if you're coming in, just thinking you're going to win a championship, that's, that's not how it is. That's not how it rolls. Like, we're more about building character and, um, you know, a work ethic within yourself where you feel like self-fulfilled and you're self-motivated and self-inspired. Like, yeah, we're there to push you, but what's going to happen when we're not there? We want, you, we want to build that within you on your own by yourself. So when no one's looking and the doors are closed, you're doing what you need to do to be on the path of where you want to be. You have to think that way too, because if you don't think that way, and you come in because you just and you come here just because you want to win. You, most likely, you're not going to make it through the end of summer. You just you just don't have the right mentality to. And that happens. It, it happens know? all the yeah. The, the kids come in that are just like I want to win, and that's it. And I'm like that that's not how we roll. Because guess what? We're not guaranteeing a win. You know, we've been really blessed. We've been really lucky. Our kids are great. Our families are great. But what we can guarantee is that we're going to build something inside of you that you're going to take for years from now, like years. Yeah, being being one of you guys, the athletes, for sure, you guys push my limits mentally and physically, I feel like. And um, kind of want to know what's the experience that you guys went through that you guys are now installing into your kids and your athletes. We, we were athletes, too. <laughs> yeah. So where did you learn that from? Where did you did you take that from? Like a, a video on YouTube? Obviously not. But I don't know. For me, it was just the grit I had inside of me. Like I, I if I if I was gonna do it, I'm I wanted to do it to my absolute fullest. And hearing Jeff, how incredible Jeff was as a motivator to my brothers, I wanted to be a part of that so bad. And so that that type of person I I, I get from Jeff. Jeff is just absolutely incredible person. I love being around him. He's one of my great friends. Um, I can call him up. He talks to me all the time. It's just, I, I feel like I got a lot of that grit from Jeff too. And I think, um, one, yeah, we were athletes. So we understood that aspect of it. Like, and if there's any time that I felt like looking back as an athlete, like, oh, I wish somebody would have, you know, told me that or somebody would have, you know, and, and I had amazing coaches like, hello, Jeff inspired motivated and i so i got a lot of that from him but you know there's always just times and just in regular life like we're growing up we're gro we've been growing up as we've been coaching there's things that it's like if i just had my mind right like if somebody told me this like you're not going to just grow up one day and be like you're an adult like you got it all figured out like that's what it is it's like no like i'm still netta <laughs> like <laughs> still me but 
uh, I, I've inst- these are the things that are getting me to where I want to be. These are the things that and I could do better. Or I wish I wish somebody would have told me this. Like yeah. So, so it's just kind of a collective of you know wine being coached and groomed by the best. You know Jeff Tanaz, James Speed. You know James Speed will be one that's like one two down up up up, and we're like. Just Can't go up, up, like, <laughs> let's go. And, um, you know, I, and there's times like once you get to college um, is what we're really preparing our kids for, right? Is that for them to know that they can do it. Like they don't need someone in their corner because there's not always going to be someone there that you're going to have all the tools you need to be great, to be successful, to feel accomplished, to feel confident, like on your own. As long as you, you know, align your thoughts with your goals, like you stay focused on that and you don't like veer off in life because it's so easy, you know, but like set goals, like remember them, remind yourself of them and like conquer them every day because every, all the little things you do is what adds up to the big, big things. And I think that people, you know, seem to forget that, like even just in life, like me as a human. So obviously with the coronavirus, um, the seniors that are aging out now that do, are they going to lose their season? Like what, how do you feel about that? I know that's obviously it's just up in the air and obviously we all feel bad for her. Like, do you think they should get that chance or honestly, to that? do you want me to answer Mike or do you want to answer? You can answer. <laughs> this is how I feel, but I'm going to support whatever our governing body chooses. For sure, for sure. I, I do think that seniors, super seniors should get another year of eligibility if they were enrolled and competing this season that was cut short. So like, it couldn't be like, I, Oh, I get another year. Like I can just come back, but I wasn't cheering last year. Right. Oh, okay. That makes, yeah. Yeah. So you have to, you had to have been competing this rostered. season or rostered. Okay. So if you're injured and like you're, you know, whatever, like you just had to Over be rostered. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, somebody put this on Twitter and I was like, I didn't think about that, but that's great to go with, um, your the team that you were on like that like you have to go stay within that that's what they put on twitter and i was like that great makes sense that makes so, sense so i do think that like you need to be enrolled and be rostered the year before and then you could get another year of eligibility because it was cut short because these world's kids you know didn't get to compete at worlds like that's 100 you know yeah, trained for but, yeah so i i believe in that but if the usasf decides not you know whatever I'll support them, but I have I have voice that I do believe that our super seniors should get another year of eligibility should they choose to. Uh, right. Does yeah. your voice get heard by the governing body? Do they do they ask for your your the guys' coaches input? Um, I just reached out and told them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was like, because my kids yeah. are asking, like they're asking, so like I'm like, hey, I just I don't is this rumored? I don't know what's ha- going on, like. Is there an actual possibility of this? If so, you know, my kids are hounding me every day. Can, you know, I get some feedback? And I think they're just working on it and they're trying to figure out the logistics. There's a lot of things that are behind the scenes that have to work for it as well. So you know, I just, I have my faith in them and trust in them that they're going to do what's right. Uh, Mike, I have to ask you because I need to. So you had yeah. your brothers, <laughs> Se- Seti, Calvin, Xavier, Polly, Cameron. Um, you guys were all like crazy tumblers and everything in the cheerleading world. Who started that and then how did everyone get into it? Uh, Calvin was the first to start it all. Uh, first year cheering in, in uh, 2000. And uh, I lived right across the street from him. And so um, Calvin was like, dude, come check out practice. And I was like, check out practice. No way, dude. Just cheerleading. <laughs> he was like, no, just like, all right. So I'm, I'm in high school, like barely high school, freshman. And I get to practice and he's like, dude, come over here and try to try to throw her this chick. And I was like, what? And he was like, you just throw him. And we just started like hanging out with a bunch <laughs> of girls all day long. And then, uh, and then Cameron came into it and uh, we used to have a trampoline in our backyard. We were already self-taught tumblers on our front lawn and stuff. Um, and then Cameron got into it. And then my brother Danny got into it. And then it was the four of us, five of us. Then our neighbor Brett got into it. And then so we met said, um, and Chris and they got into it. We're like, we were just like tumbling in the street and they were skateboarding. And they saw us do a backflip and they're like, Burr! they stopped, they came over and started talking to us. And that's how all that kicked off. Um, 
but uh, Calvin did start it off for all of us. Paula used to tell me, he goes, yeah, you, you weren't able to eat dinner at our house unless you had a standing fool. <laughs> Obviously, all you guys had standing fools. Oh, yeah. We had broken doors <laughs> in the living room. We would do standing one to double, one to doubles in our living room. Like, we used to just go crazy. We, we would literally beat Cameron's legs in the morning. It'd be like 8 o'clock in the morning. He'd be sleeping in his bed. We'd pull the blankets off and we're like, get up, throw a whip through the triple on the front lawn right now. And if he didn't land it, then we'd beat his legs. And that's yes. how yeah. So we would, we would literally make his legs mush. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's why, that's why he's so good. That's why he's uh, so good. He was, he was landing whip through, uh, uh, yeah, whip through the triples on the front lawn at like eight years old. He was one of the first people to compete a double, 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 double. Like he was the first to bounce. Yeah. Just, he, yeah, he, he didn't have a so choice. So in that instance, who, who are you putting your money on in a tumbling, a tumble off? Oh, I got Cam all day. Oh. <laughs> Cam, I got Cam. But when we, like when we go to restaurants and we'd be out and we'd meet people and stuff like that, when they ask what you do and you're like, I'm a cheer coach, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, I know I'm a proud coach, but if I'm going to show them cheerleading, I'm showing them black ops at worlds in like 2017 or something like that. Like that's, that's cheerleading right there at its time. Right. Yeah. And I'll, I'll do, I'll show people this is what cheerleading is as opposed to go watch this movie or blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you straight up what it is. Like this is what cheerleading is about right here. Me and Brandon on Ghost, how did you guys feel, feel about us on Ghost? What was it like coaching us? Because obviously we had our own different things. I remember there was one time in the gym I came in and I felt real sick and stuff. And Netta slammed the door and was like, you're not coming in? I said, no. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love co I loved coaching I love you guys. Coaching you guys were so much fun. Uh, there's just so many memorable moments with you guys. Uh, we really did enjoy you guys a lot. You guys are hard workers. Stevie, I think the most memorable moment was when you threw your double onto the mat and you're like coach uh, can you, i have my double can you put it in the routine I'm like if you throw it in the routine land it on this one and then you <laughs> landed right on your stomach i was, I was dead <laughs> I, I remember i sat up and, then, and i was like no. but you landed like this and all of a sudden you look up you're like never mind never mind <laughs> <laughs> oh it was in the middle of the ball too you guys were like a total joy and it was fun. Like Brandon, like you were just always like leading by example and just um, like a leader in all ways. Like you led, you were vocal, but you're always like in tune. Like when we talk, like when I, I, I would feel like you got it. Like, you know, and sometimes when we talk to people, I'm like, hello. Like, <laughs> Yeah, well, was, I, I felt like, coaching like that. I feel that sometimes. You know, like, and so like you were, it was so receptive. And like Stevie, like I just freaking loved you. You made because your accent. It's just because right. your yes. accent. The first you guys are my very favorite story <laughs> ever. <on> Owie. <laughs> he was like so serious, and I was like, "What?" And he was like, "I got an owie in baskets." <laughs> and I was like, "Excuse me, Stevie," and he's like, "I got an owie in baskets." And I was like, you bought an alley in baskets? And he was like, no. Who, it was someone or Allie? Yeah, was oh, and he was Pedro Allie. Pedro Allie. 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 And she goes, you got an alley? I said, Pedro Allie. And then I was like, I remember. I was like, Paige got an alley? Allie. You got an alley? Yeah, and he got so upset, huh? He got so upset. No, Netta. <laughs> and having you guys in the gym was awesome when you guys start, like taught the stunt privates. Like, I think everyone oh, loved it. So like, and we miss that. Like, we love that too, you know. It, it, you guys just brought a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of flavor, a lot of uh, joy in, into it. So we, yeah. we, I loved you guys. And I even loved you on that day that you were 60, Dave. Remember, remember when we were redoing our routine and you had to catch that round off shoulder sit? Oh. And the next practice, you came in with the neck brace. Oh, my gosh. That was so bad. I remember I was on the <laughs> way home. I said, Brandon, you're going to have to take me to the hospital, bro. I can't move. No, I was in the shower. He comes banging on the door at 2 o'clock in the morning. I think I broke my neck, man. <laughs> but the, the best memory I have of Netta and Brandon, this, you probably remember this, Netta. So we were in Express Cheer, Dallas, NCA. Um. <laughs> and there was Smoed, Cali Coed, Vixens, nearly every single Cali team there was. And Brandon dropped his stunt with Lex. This was our last pullout. You said this is the last pullout ever. And Brandon dropped his stunt with Lexi, and you tore him one in front of everyone. You said, <laughs> "This little girl, how could you drop her?" And I was crying, laughing. 
<laughs> and then remember, we send each other text messages at the same exact time. Same exact. I press. I press in. And, and, then, and I, we, I, we, like we were texting each other at the same night and didn't know it. But yeah, right after I was like, "Hey, man, like I love you." <laughs> that's no, that's for sure. That was like a bond bond moment for me, at least, and put yeah, a lot of trust. I, yeah, because you know, like sometimes that happens in the heat of the moment. For sure, no. But the probably the best memory on Ghost was actually the 2019 when you brought us back. That was probably my most memorable because I felt fresh. I, <laughs> I one of you guys posted something. I sent it to Mike, but I loved it. It was when you guys like it was at the end of the pyramid, and you guys were like, "Yeah, we just won." Oh, I it was yeah, wait, that was a sad moment. Like that's a hate, love, hate one. It is. I know. We were in pyramid <laughs> together. You know, and we came down and Brandon- I said, it's party, it's party time. I said, we I just like, won world. I was like, we just won here. And then Brandon goes, I know you can't dance, but you better go hard. I was like, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love those moments. Like I know. On the floor, you know, like- You can that, just remember that, it. That could just so happen. Clear. Yeah, I love that. Oh. <laughs> I like, I, my, one of my favorite pictures though, too, is the one when we're in Palm Springs, it's you guys. With uh, Dejan and Jago, and you guys are all just Jago, yep, looking good. Look like a, <laughs> look like like a bring it. it on picture, yep. And <laughs> right across from us was our competitors, and so everyone right. was just sizing each other up. We're, it, was, it was a stare down. Gosh, that was that was a fun year. That was a super fun year. Well, I know you guys are busy. Thank you guys for your time, and um, I hope you guys the best. Stay safe. Yeah, the thanks court. for being on uh, our podcast. Talk no BS. With yeah, the man, BS we love you guys. Ghost round seven, is it? Five. five five ghost round five let's go yep i guess i didn't miss a year yet right since you guys didn't go this year you didn't it? you didn't yeah let's go oh. all Who's right today? hey there's back a lot of unfinished business we're ready to get to it oh. yeah. yeah look at my hand ring on this finger empty no oh, boys let's go okay and then when you guys come back together stunt privates again stunt with the bs experience yeah <laughs> ghost on three one, two, three, go. 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 <laughs> All right, All right guys. thanks for joining in, guys. All right, take it easy. Love you guys. Bye.